Farming and lovely is that. It's quarter past six. Um, it's been called the most widespread miscarriage of justice in UK history. Yeah, more than 700 postmasters that were wrongly convicted of stealing post office money because of a faulty computer system. So today, around 40 of those convictions are likely to be quashed by the Court of Appeal. But in many cases, the damage has already been done. So I caught up with two women who lost their reputations, their livelihoods, and for one of them, her freedom. For 16 years, Seema's life has been turned upside down. In 2005, she was accused of stealing and falsifying the accounts at the post office she ran. The trouble began when a computer system installed by the post office said money was missing from the tills. Every evening we do balancing, so which was nothing new because we do balancing of the shop as well. So every evening when we run that report, that computer tells us how much money you should have. And then we check like how much money we have it in the till. And that never balanced. Initially, Seema reported the issues to her boss, but the shortfalls continued until a post office audit claimed £74,000 was missing. To make up the gap, Seema added money from her own savings and borrowed from family and friends. Only later did it emerge that the computer system was faulty after Seema had been convicted. And of course, when you were sent to prison, you were pregnant. When I went in the labour, I was wearing a tag. So I was thinking, oh my God, what could be the midwife will be think, thinking, what kind of mother I am? Lucky that I was pregnant, otherwise I would have killed myself. Was it that bad? The way it was in there, it was more scary. Because I was put in with the people who've been self-harming and anybody can come anytime and just stab me. And Seema isn't alone. Wendy was accused of stealing £26,000. She says she was told she'd go to prison if she didn't admit to false accounting. She was made to serve a community sentence and forced to sell her home. You can't explain the feeling that you get when you've had to plead guilty to something that you know you haven't done. The next day we went shopping in a local supermarket and as we walked through the door... The whole of the newspaper racking was the local um, paper and it was my face all over it with local sub post mistress escapes prison. Um, but I, I never really got the chance to tell anybody that I hadn't done it. In 2019, a High Court judge ruled the computer system was at fault. The post office settled a claim brought by more than 500 claimants, but didn't admit liability. For Wendy and Seema, and others in a similar position, today's ruling is about clearing their names and rebuilding their lives. I'm not dishonest. I haven't stolen anything. I haven't defrauded anybody. I haven't done that. To have that sort of stress on you um, constantly it's just just awful. But I'm hoping that now we've got to how far we are that will start to ease and, and get better. Now today around 40 of those convictions are likely to be quashed by the Court of Appeal but in many cases the damage has already been done. Yeah, I've been catching up with two women who lost their reputations, their livelihoods, and for one of them, her freedom. For 16 years, Seema's life has been turned upside down. In 2005, she was accused of stealing and falsifying the accounts at the post office she ran. The trouble began when a computer system installed by the post office said money was missing from the tills. Every evening we do balancing. So, which was nothing new because we do the balancing of the shop as well. So every evening when we run that report, that computer tells us how much money you should have. And then we check like how much money we have it in the till. And that never balanced. Initially, Seema reported the issues to her boss, but the shortfalls continued until a post office audit claimed £74,000 was missing. To make up the gap, Seema added money from her own savings and borrowed from family and friends. Only later did it emerge that the computer system was faulty after Seema had been convicted. And of course, when you were sent to prison, 
you were pregnant. When I went in labor, I was wearing a tag. So I was thinking, oh my God, what could be the midwife will be think, thinking, what kind of mother I am? Lucky that I was pregnant, otherwise I would have killed myself. Was it that bad? The way it was in there, it was more scarier. Because I was put in with the people who have been self-harming and anybody can come anytime and just stab me. And Seema isn't alone. Wendy was accused of stealing £26,000. She says she was told she'd go to prison if she didn't admit to false accounting. She was made to serve a community sentence and forced to sell her home. You can't explain the feeling that you get when you've had to plead guilty to something that you know you haven't done. The next day we went shopping in a local supermarket and as we walked through the door, the whole of the newspaper racking was the local um, paper and it was my face all over it with local sub posts mistress escapes prison um, but I, I never really got the chance to tell anybody that I hadn't done it. In 2019 a high court judge ruled the computer system was at fault. The post office settled a claim brought by more than 500 claimants but didn't admit liability for Wendy and Seema and others in a similar position. Today's ruling is about clearing their names and rebuilding their lives. I'm not dishonest. I haven't stolen anything. I haven't defrauded anybody. I haven't done that. To have that sort of stress on you um, constantly, it's just, just awful. But I'm hoping that now we've got to how far we are, that will start to ease and, and get better. One of those waiting for her name to be cleared today is Jo Hamilton, who was convicted of stealing £36,000 from her post office in Hampshire, and she joins me now from outside the Royal Courts of Justice. Now, Jo, um, how are you today? <laughs> oh, it's just amazing. Sun shining and, uh, yeah, it couldn't be a better day. I mean, we spoke uh, a few years ago now, I remember, and um, yeah. it's been going on for so long. Just how much, how much do you be feeling, um, knowing or hoping that this conviction will be overturned? Well, it's, yeah, it's been decades, and uh, it's just, I, I, well, I, I feel victorious. We're not there yet, but I just feel it's been such an epic battle that, that actually, We've done it, we're here, you know. Um, it, it's, you just need to keep going. It's, it's been such an injustice. Well, let's, let's let everyone know kind of what happened to you because in two, it's, it all started for you in 2003 when um, there were concerns about the accounts. And from then you were accused in 2006 of, by the post office of taking 36,000 pounds from the post office. And how, what was the financial impact of that and the human impact of that on you? Well, but leading up to the, um, the courts, I had put thousands into the post office to try and keep it going. Um, they'd taken my wages because I kept ringing up saying I'd had problems. And uh, eventually I couldn't shovel any more money in it and that's how it got to 36,000. Well, I had to remortgage the house. We couldn't quite get enough money, so the village stumped up the rest because they all turned up in court to support me. Um, it was the most... Oh, it was absolutely terrifying because they told me that I, would, I was 75% likely to go to prison, so I took my bag packs and, um, yeah, <laughs> I didn't go to prison. But um, well, you did and then have we a began criminal, this you, journey. That, you did have a criminal record, and that did impact your life. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I had to plead guilty to false accounting because they charged me with theft, but I pleaded not guilty to theft because I hadn't stolen anything. And then they did a plea bargain, and so I pleaded guilty to false accounting. And, yeah, that leaves, I think, as big a mark on it almost as if you'd murdered someone. It's, you can't get certain jobs. You, you just, well, you can't ever be left in a position of trust, which is terrible when you're a trustworthy person. And it's a very familiar story in the sense of people we've spoken to, postmasters we've spoken to, where the trust in them has gone and their reputation. Because you were at the heart of the community and 
in some ways you were very lucky that your community supported you. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm lucky because I managed to get work cleaning houses because nobody actually believes I stole anything. Um, and I've got the keys to about 15 houses in the village and uh, everyone leaves me looking after their dogs and, and you know, so I, I'm one of the lucky ones. Um, we spoke about um, your the uh, no longer having a criminal record, which is obviously so important if your appeal is upheld. But there will be another step for you to go in terms of compensation. Yeah. Yeah. We have to then issue post office with a letter of claim. They've appointed um, lawyers, and they'll either pay it or we'll end up back in court again. So yeah, it could be another journey. We don't know yet. It's it, it isn't over till it's over. It absolutely isn't. But Joe, I can feel the hope um, in you um, today, and I'm, I'm glad the sun's <laughs> yeah. shining for you. And I, I can just almost see oh, the shoulders fabulous. relax. I can almost see it. I wish you yeah. <laughs> all, all the best. Um, Joe Hamilton there, former sub postmistress. And this is it. You've been following this story, and you know that the stress and the strain it's caused illness, it's called mental health um, problems, and just that worry, like as Joe alluded yep. to, not being trusted. You yeah, are the uh, heart of a community and that changed. Yeah, and Seema, who I was talking to in the report a little earlier, was saying absolutely everything changed. Yeah. She couldn't tell her family back home that she'd been convicted. She couldn't tell her eldest child she was pregnant when she went to prison. She told her eldest child that she was going to a special hospital. Uh, all of these things that have been going on for so long and only two journalists are going to be allowed to cover the actual court proceedings because of social distancing. Uh, one of them who will be in court is Nick Wallace who's covered this story extensively. He joins us now. Um, Nick, good morning to you. As we were just talking about there, this has morning. been going on for so long there are so many different issues to unpick in this case um i just wonder for you what has stood out the most in all the time that you've been covering these stories well first of all that the horizon it system was never fit for purpose in the first place it was rolled out into the network at a time when it was described as the largest non-military it system in europe but it didn't work and it meant that when some postmasters balanced their accounts, mysterious discrepancies appeared. And the post office chose to believe their IT suppliers and their IT system above the sub postmasters. They then went on a prosecution spree for about 14 years where 736 people were successfully convicted. And when it came to light in 2013 that those convictions or some of those convictions may be unsafe, they covered it up. And they made the sub postmasters like Joe fight for years and years and years to actually get to the truth. So there's a corporate cover up denialism that has gone on and it has cost tens of millions of pounds of public money to actually get to this point today where we're going to see some convictions quashed. Yeah, and absolutely a huge campaign as well. Um, so many people involved, but one man stands out particularly that has got everybody to this stage today. Yes, Alan Bates was the leader of the Justice for Sub Postmasters Alliance. He was sacked very early on, 2003, but he was determined that the post office were going to be held accountable for what they did. He gathered together so many sub postmasters that by the time it came to a high court action in 2018, there were 555 of them. And despite being faced with overwhelming odds, which is from a government backed institution, he won hands down and was able to get a settlement and set in motion the process which allowed the Criminal Cases Review Commission to refer all these cases to the Court of Appeal today. What has gone on is shocking. The post office ordered the shredding of documents relating to problems with the Horizon system back in 2013 and no one has been held to account. Yeah, and we were hearing Joe's story there and a little earlier that of Seema too and also Wendy. Um, and what is so astonishing about this story is the impact that it has had on their lives. They were unable to find other work, even though they left the post office, because they had those criminal convictions. It's blighted so many lives. So many people have slid into alcoholism, mental health problems. They haven't been able to get jobs. They haven't been trusted with their own grandchildren. They've been shunned by communities. These were people who had to be absolutely spotless in terms of their reputation in order to get their hands on a post office. The fact, the idea that they would suddenly all turn to crime beggars belief. People have real questions to answer for the lives that have been ruined as a result of this. But as yet, the government has said on the record, because it happened such a long time ago and because so many people were involved, it's not minded to take any action in order to find anyone responsible. 
Um, and Nick, just maybe explain your involvement in all of this, because you got involved in a rather unusual fashion, uh, but also quite clearly the focus today is on all of those people who will have their convictions quashed, but also, you know, the end of you telling this story that's been going on for so long. Yeah, I mean, I got involved just over 10 years ago when uh, a cab driver told me that his pregnant wife had been sent to prison for a crime she didn't commit. That woman was Seema Misra, and it didn't take much investigation to find out that he wasn't telling a tale or spinning a yarn. He was telling the truth, as was so many other people. And so it just became a story that, that hasn't left me. I've, I've, I've been covering it because it's such an important tale, and I'm glad that it's finally getting the airtime it deserves. Nick, it's really good to talk to you this morning. Uh, and of course, we'll have full coverage on BBC News of uh, that verdict and the events at the court uh, expected around 10.